Okay, let's just recap on what we did yesterday. Um, we were given the key words of gradient of a tangent to a curve. There was two different ways that you could write that. One was the function way and one was using y. Can any remember, anybody remember what was what? Dy of dx. Yeah, we've got dy by dx, so that was the, the y form of something. So if y was equal to a function, we did dy by dx on it. And the other one, Lena? f dash and then yeah. x in the f dash of x, that's how we said it, yeah. So that was called differentiation. So a key word, if you want the gradient of a curve, it might not actually say tangent in it, but it is the gradient of the tangent to the curve. It gives us a gradient function. So those are called gradient functions. And they allow us to find out the gradient at any point on the graph if we have a value of x. But differentiation then, we had a little algorithm, a little rule that we had that helped us to differentiate. What was that, Keenan? You know? So say I gave you y equals x squared, how would you differentiate it? Yeah. Times it by the term yeah. and minus one. That's right. So you take, you multiply by the power and then you subtract one from the power. And that was the rule that we had. And so the final answer to that one would be two x to the one. We don't write the one in there. Okay, so that's just a quick recap of what we did last lesson. Now we looked at really simple functions and for example if I gave you y equals, I've given you the x squared, if I gave you 5x then dy by dx, Caitlin what would that be? Um, yeah. The other way to think about it, it's a straight line isn't it? And the gradient of a straight line is always constant so in this case it would be 5. The other way to think about it is that that's actually, sorry, it's got a gradient of power of 1. So if we multiply by the power and then take 1 away from the power, that's what we would get, which is simply equal to 5. What was special about y equals, say, 3? What did that represent? What did that represent? Can you remember? Is it a constant? Yeah, it's a constant, and that constant is a straight line, yeah? And it's a horizontal straight line. And any line that's horizontal has a gradient of zero, yeah? So if I did dy by dx on a constant, I will always get zero. And that's crucial for when we come and do stationary points later on. Is that a quick reminder for you then? Yeah? Right, let's move on then. The next section that we're at is 7.4, and that's on page 10 of your booklet. Right, it's a bit of a blurb at the beginning there. And all it's saying is that if you get a function, or y equals lots of different terms, all you do is apply differentiation to each individual term. So what we've got here, is the first one. So using standard results to differentiate this, um, it's just multiplying by the power and taking one away from the power. That's all there is. Um, so if we take the first one, we'll make it uh, y equals x cubed plus x squared minus x to the half. So if we want to differentiate, we take each term in turn and we apply the differentiation rule to it. So multiply by the power, take one away. Multiply by the power, take one away. It's one, but you don't have to write it. Then multiply by the power, and then a half minus one is minus a half. Now that's where your laws of indices come in, and we can write that in a different way. So what we would do, especially if we need to substitute a value of x in, the first two are absolutely fine, but then the second one is 1 over 2x to the half. And 2x to the half, x to the half actually means? What 
would you do? A square root of it, yeah? So, again, that could be written as simplified. So 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 over 2 root x. And this one is a useful form when we substitute numbers and the powers and also fractional and that's why I said right at the beginning your laws of indices and working fractions mentally really important. So y is equal to 2x to the minus 3. Differentiate, multiply by the power so 2 times minus 3 and then take 1 away from the power. You don't have to show that working if you can do that in your head then that's absolutely fine. So dy by dx in this case is going to be minus 6x to the minus 4. The minus 6 stays on top because remember the power minus 4 is only with the x and it becomes x to the 4. So it's using our laws of indices again. Right, next one then. Uh, C. y equals a third x to the half plus 4x squared. Right, we're multiplying fractions together and we're adding and subtracting fractions. So, dy by dx is going to be equal to a third times a half and then take one away from your power. The next one's easy, so it's multiply by the power, take one away. Let's tidy up this one, so it's a sixth of x to the minus a half. We tidy that up a little bit further, we get 1 over 6x to the half. And if we want it in the form that we can do some substitution, it's going to be 1 over 6 root x plus 8x. I've not made any daft mistakes there, I'm okay with that. Right, a little bit of practice for you then is exercise 7d. Give you five, ten minutes to do that, um, and then we'll go through solutions. Yes, so try this on that as quick as you can. Can we check question one just briefly and see how you've got on with that? If you look at the first one, hopefully that was straightforward for you because it was just a, a minus one there. Part B was a little bit trickier uh, because you had a half times a minus two, so that gives you minus one. And remember in algebra you don't have to put minus one as the coefficient of your x gives you minus 1 over x cubed and part c was pretty tricky. Your 
multiply by minus a half and then you were taking one away. So minus, one, minus a half take away one is minus three over two. And then we make that into a positive power by using our laws of indices. And then we put it into the form. So this form here is your substitution form. Okay. In an exam, or an exam question, it would be okay to just stop at that part there. But you'll find further on in a question, you'll be given a value of x, and you'll have to know that form so that you can calculate it. Because remember, you don't have a calculator. So that's where your square, cube numbers, your roots, you have to know off by heart. Right, same again then, if we have a look at question two. Can you have a go at two and three? And I'll leave you for five minutes to go on with that. through the answers. Then if you get stuck, just um, raise your hand and we'll show you. Can we have a quick look at question two, please? Check your answers for that. Okay, in the first one, we were told that we have to find the gradient of the tangent of the curve at point A and the x coordinate of A is minus one. So you differentiate it, put minus one into your uh, gradient function. Did you get zero for it? Yeah. The second one was trickier. So in this one here, you notice we needed to convert from this form into a positive index so we could do the substitution. And then from there, you could either say, say 11 and a half, 11.5 or 23 over 2. Do you agree with me on that? I haven't made a daft mistake, have I? Is that okay? Right, and then five minutes for question three, please.
have a quick look at uh, the first one, first part on question three. We were asked where the gradient was equal to zero. So if we differentiate it, we get 2x minus 5. And if the gradient is equal to zero, then that's your f dash of x is equal to zero. We rearrange it and we get an x coordinate. We then, it did ask for the point or points on the curve with the equation. So we had to find the y coordinate as well. So you go back to the original equation, f of x, and you substitute in there. A lot of fraction work so your fractions can come into this as well so we've seen this throughout the C1 and remember with no calculator you've really got to be fluent with your fractions is that okay so everybody's seen what's going on right same with the other ones then can you differentiate them make them equal to zero and if you've got a quadratic you're going to have a couple of points if it's the first part here we just had one point so let's do the other ones as well then. B was pretty nasty because you were dealing with quite large numbers. Uh, so on part B, if we have a look. If you differentiate, you get this quadratic. We make it equal to zero, which allows us to have an equation which we can divide through by three. It makes the numbers easier for yourself. So from there, we get x equals two and four. We substitute back into the original equations and what I forgot to say in part A is that please state the actual coordinates, the x and y coordinates of the two points. So if you think about it, 
what we've got at the beginning there is a cubic. And a cubic may actually have two points where the gradient is zero. And they're called turning points. So if we have a look at what a cubic is like, what we're saying here is that you've got a cubic as a plus. So it looks like that. And what we're saying is that the tangent to the curve that point, and also at that point, you've got f dash of x is equal to zero, and you've also got f dash of x is equal to zero at this point here. So um, that's the point um, two zero, say, and that's the one that was four minus four. And they're actually called stationary points. And that's when f dash of x or dy by dx is equal to zero. And that's what we're looking for. Right, can we... Have we got the hang of those ones then? Yeah? Right, let's move on to the next part then, please.